diamond is being compressed under a pressure of 1000 atmospheres. Find the percentage change in its density. Given that one atmosphere equals 10 to the power five pascals and the bulk modulus of diamond is 400 gigapascals. All right, the first thing we'll do is gather the data and see what's given to us. We are given pressure and we've been given the bulk modulus. So from this, we can pretty much guess we're dealing with bulk stress and bulk strain over here. So the first thing we'll do is write the expression. That's Hooke's law. Let's write that down. Hooke's law tells us that bulk stress, which is the same as pressure, is proportional to bulk strain. Bulk strain is, is the change in volume per unit volume. And that proportionality constant is the bulk modulus, B. And we've talked about this in previous videos. So if you're not familiar with this or you require a refresher, it will be a great idea to go back, watch those videos first and then come back over here. But anyways, a good way to think about bulk modulus is we could say that bulk modulus equals the pressure when, when this number goes to one, this number becomes one. And what does it mean that this number equals one? Well, delta V is the change in the volume. And over here, under pressure, the volume decreases, the material shrinks. So really, the change in the volume is negative, so there should be a negative sign over here, but let's not worry about those signs. Don't worry about that. But anyways, delta V is the change in the volume, and V is the initial volume. So if we say delta V or V equals one, we are saying change in the volume should be equal to initial volume. Meaning if the initial volume was say five, we, we compress it by five. If the initial volume is 10, we compress it by 10. In other words, we are doing a 100% compression. Delta V over V equals one means 100% compression. 100% compression. So we can think of bulk modulus as the amount of pressure needed for 100% compression. All right, and so if you think of it this way, we can now understand for diamond, 400 gigapascals is needed to compress diamond by 100%. So if the pressure is 1000 atmospheres, how much will be the compression? Oh, we can easily calculate that, right? We can easily calculate that by doing some cross multiplication maybe. But the problem is, we are not asked how much compression uh, this, this pressure produces, we are asked how much change in the density, how much percentage change in the density it produces. So density, we have to talk a little bit about density. Density tells us how crowded a material is, how much mass is concentrated in a unit volume. So we usually write density as the mass over volume how much mass is constant in unit volume. And since the volume is changing, density will also change, right? And that's what we need to calculate. How much is the density changing? So instead of asking this, they're asking us, what is the percentage change in density? That means what is delta rho over rho? This is what we need to find out. Okay, now the way I see it is, by knowing, by using the knowledge of bulk modulus, we can calculate this. And by using this expression, we can actually relate changes in density to changes in volume. We should be able to do that, right? That's actually not physics, that's mathematics, if you think about it, right? So we have been, we know it's the it's connection between density and volume. We just have to figure out the connection between changes in density and changes in volume. And then we are done, all right? So here's what we'll do. Instead of trying to derive this right now over here and you know, <clears throat> losing focus from the physics to maths, we'll, we'll, we'll directly see what the relationship over here is. I'll just write down the relationship over here. We'll do this, pro we'll solve the problem. And then towards the end, we'll, we'll do the math. All right, so we'll do it that way. So if you do the math over here, if you try to figure out the changes in the density and changes in volume, it turns out, that the change in the density per unit density, in fact, turns out to be, this is a very nice relationship, turns out to be equal to, equal to ch uh, change in volume per unit volume. So the percentage change in density turns out to be exactly equal to percentage change in volume, and this is true for small changes in volume, all right? So 
for small changes in volume only. So for small, small changes in volume, changes in volume. And uh, we'll prove this later. Okay, as of now, we'll accept this. And of course, there will be a negative sign over here. And the reason why there's a negative sign is because it's telling us that if the delta V is positive, that means if volume increases, then the density will decrease, right? I mean, there's an inverse relationship. So that's, so if one increases, the other one should decrease. And that's the only reason there's a negative sign. But as far as the amount goes, the percentage change magnitude of the percentage changes are exactly the same. So that makes our life very easy because we just need to calculate this and then we, then, then we know what this is, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So from our definition of bulk modulus, we just learned that 400 gigapascals, so here it is, 400 gigapascals of pressure is needed to compress diamond by 100%. So this much pressure compresses diamond by 100%, 100% compression. So the pressure of 1,000 atmospheres, 1,000 atmospheres, and one atmosphere is a 10 to the power of five Pascal. So instead of an atmosphere, we can just say 10 to the power of five Pascal. Produces how much compression? That's the question. Produces how much compression? And we can solve this by a cross multiplication. We could say that the compression that it produces would be, this would be 1000 times 10 to the power of five times 100 divided by 400 gigapascals 400 gigapascal. There's a, there's a pascal on the top as well. There's a pascal over here. This pascal and this pascal get canceled. And uh, giga is 10 to the power nine. And on the top, let's see how many zeros we have. One, two, three, four, five. We have 10 zeros. So what we could do is we can cancel 10 zeros, nine zeros from here and one zero over here, all right? So what remains now, if you see carefully, I hope I'm not skipping too many steps over here, but if you just cut a lot of zeros, you will end up with one over 40. All right, you can just pause and just confirm everything is going, uh, going fine. Anyways, we'll get one over 40. That will be, well, one over four is 0.25. One over 40 is 0 0.025. And that is the amount of compression. So what we have calculated is, is this number, delta V or V, that's the amount of compression that we're getting. But since we now saw that we just saw that change in compression is the same as the change in the density, a percentage change in the density, we could also say that the percentage change in density is also so much. In fact, since volume decreased by so much amount, the density would have increased by so much amount. So I'm just gonna box that, I'm gonna say that is our final answer, all right? So the, the density is going to increase by this much amount. So yay, we are done, let's end the video. <laughs> Don't worry, I remember we have one last thing to do, we have to prove this is to be true, and um, the, it'll be a great idea to pause the video and see if you can try this yourself first. So you, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of clue. What we could do is, so, so let me do that in the next page, let me just, yeah, let's do that on a fresh page. We have just solved the physics problem. So we need to connect between the uh, densities and volume, so let's start with the connection, we know that density is mass over volume. So we can think of this as the initial density and this is the initial volume. Once we compress it, the volume changes. So the new density, rho dash, will be the new mass divided by the new volume. Well, notice that the mass doesn't change, so m remains the same, all right? So again, this could be the clue. Now just try and figure out what delta rho, remember, that's what we want to calculate. What is delta, oops, use the same color. What is delta rho? over rho, this is what we need to find out. Remember, delta rho is change in density, final density minus initial density. Just plug in and see what you get. All right, let's do it. So delta rho would be, uh, let's write that, delta rho over rho, this is what we want. This would be final density minus, delta rho is final minus initial, right? So that would be final density minus initial density divided by initial density. Final density, we have it over here, that's mass divided by final volume minus mass divided by initial volume, divided by mass divided by initial volume. We can take m common, and we can take the common denominator over here. We get v dash times v, and on the numerator we get v minus v dash, 
divided by, on the denominator we get m divided by v. That is m cancels and v cancels. So what we're left with is v minus v dash divided by v dash, all right? So let's see what's that equal to. What is v minus v dash? Ooh, that's delta v, that's the change in volume, right? Well, yeah, but no, change in volume is final minus initial, right? Change is final minus, this is initial minus final, so that's the negative of delta v. That's where the minus sign comes from. We already seen there's a minus sign. And in the denominator, you might go, well, look, denominator is a v dash. We need a v, right? Well, that's where we could just say, look, if the changes are very tiny, then v dash and v are pretty much the same, right? We can just say that. And you might be like, whoa, 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 how can that be? So let me just give you an example. What I'm saying is if you're dividing, say, okay, some, some number divided by 100, and you're dividing some number by 100.1, well, that's pretty much the same, right? I mean, you're not gonna have a huge difference. That's why this only works when you're dealing with a very small quantity. And so notice that what we have found now, we've just proved that the change in density per unit density is indeed, indeed the same as change in volume per unit volume, provided, provided the volume doesn't change too much. All right, so there we have it.